Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I have the pleasure of reacquainting myself with Marty Gilbert today. It's been a while since we first talked, and I, as I was going back listening to the episode before, I was like, oh, man, there was so I felt like there was so much more to talk about. And I know I say that all the time anyway, but anyway, let me reintroduce you to Marty as I've been reintroduced to Marty, and then we'll get to know him a little bit more and talk about the, the year that's passed and the year to come. So if you don't remember or haven't recently listened to the episode, Marty is the owner of NSENG, one of the country's largest job search networking and coaching organizations. Over the past decade plus, his events and job search coaching services have helped thousands and thousands of individuals to land new career opportunities. Now, Marty is an accomplished individual. I, I just recommend that if you don't end up talking to him yourself, just peruse what he has on LinkedIn, on his website. He has done a lot for a lot of people in a lot of ways and is still as active and as thriving as ever. So Marty, thank you for shaving off a few minutes for me today to talk. It's really good to see you again. Yeah, same here. I appreciate the opportunity. Awesome. Well, let's, I've been kind of using these, these revisiting podcasts to <clears throat> take a look back at 2023, which <laughs> I feel like saying it's been a year. I feel like I've been saying that every year, especially the last few years. It's been been a lot of changes, <laughs> a lot of developments, a lot of agility required, and a lot of new opportunities kind of opening up for people. So I'll kind of open the floor to you. What have you what have you seen in 2023 that has inspired you, excited you? What have you done in 2023 that you feel particularly proud of and pleased to continue in the year to come? So what 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 stands out for you in the when we're recording this in mid to late October, just so that the audience knows that we're year in review. But, you know, if something happens like a week before Thanksgiving, we can't cover that here. <laughs> I understand. And, and maybe it's worthwhile just to maybe calibrate what NSENG is, what we do, and then how coaching actually fits into it. Because yeah. it's, it's more than coaching, but coaching is the biggest piece of what I do. You know, this is an organization that I started about 13, 14 years ago. Today, it's the largest job search coaching organization or it's the largest job search group in the United States. We are about 10 people away from reaching, reaching the 11,000 member mark. And as you mentioned, you know, I've helped you know, several thousand people to land their next job. But most importantly, we're averaging more than one person in this group landing a new job every single day. And uh, so there's a lot of very positive activities. I've got webinars and workshops going on every three weeks. I move them you know, and do it all on Zoom. And in between, I'm doing job search coaching. I, I think for me, the big piece, you know, for 2023 is that when the pandemic hit and many of us took our businesses and moved them online, I never looked back. In fact, I experimented briefly about nine, 12 months ago with a hybrid approach because I, I used to get 100, 150 people at in-person meetings. And, you know, I so I said, OK, I'm going to make this a hybrid meeting for those of you who want to meet in person, you know, come on you know to the event. And those of you who want to come in remotely, that's great. You know, we'll do it, that piece on Zoom. <laughs> I got very few people that wanted to meet in person. And so I'm not going back in person. I'm going to stick with Zoom and I do all my coaching through, you know, this environment. And it <laughs> works out extremely well. You know, I'll, I'll have meetings with individuals via Zoom, which enabled me to, you know, I, the, the NSCNG organization became a global business overnight when the pandemic mm. hit. Okay. I'm sure there's many other businesses that have experienced what I had because I used to be very local to the greater Chicago area where, where I'm physically located. But when I moved everything on Zoom, my clients can be anywhere. And I have people all over the United States and some of them, you know, quite a few overseas that I can, you know, interact with because I'll have a front end meeting, you know, where I've given them an assignment and now we're digging into their background so I can be able to position, package, message their background so that they stand out from other candidates. And, and by the way, in the United States, the average good job is getting probably minimally at least a hundred very qualified candidates for roles. So you got to do some things to differentiate from other individuals. That's a big piece of what my coaching is about. And I love the fact that I can interact with people in all different industries, all different professions in any location. Um, so my ability to help folks wherever they might be and whatever they might want to be doing next in their careers 
you know, doesn't have any limits to it. And and so for me, that's that's a place where I, I like being because I'm I have no restrictions and no boundaries that I have to confine my business and my skills to any longer. And and so for me, the pandemic actually has had a positive uh, ripple effect to it. And and I tell a lot of people in job search. Well, there is an advantage to people in a job search given the pandemic. And, and of course, it's all state by state. Many, mm. many uh, businesses are not going back in, in person, um, mm. even in a particularly, you know, it depends what you know, the political environment is in that state. It's very much tied to that. But a lot of companies realize that if they want to retain the good talent, mm. they have to be flexible because there have been a lot of good people that have said, you know what? If you're for, going to force me to come back into the office, I'm ready to leave mm -hmm. because I either don't want to come in at all or I want to I'm willing to come in two days a week. Um, and so those companies that aren't willing to be flexible, they are losing some pretty good people. And for the job seeker, you're not limited just to your geographic area where you live any longer, which means a lot of jobs will, will be uh, a lot more flexible and you, you then are available to a lot more opportunities. This is such a, I, I love this, this line of thinking and conversation, because it's, it's something I've thought so much about over the past few years. And there's just, there's so much, like you said, there's so much tied to it, the, the return to work or return to the office or whatever it's being called that ends up being political. But there's also, there are so many practical aspects, aspects to it that I've learned not just to identify, but to embrace. Like a lot of times people will equate work from home to working less or less hard or less as a team. But like you said, there were opportunities in here. Like I've learned how to emote to my to my camera to my computer screen but in a meaningful way like i've learned how to connect with people genuinely in some ways even better than i was able to do so at an office or just an in-person environment a lot of times i mean a lot of people hate to say it or they hate to admit it but the office isn't exactly the most efficient way to maybe get the job done again depending on the job and i feel like there are not just good like quality workers, but hard workers who are just like, I don't want to go back to the office because I don't want, I don't like wasting my time. I don't like the commute that wastes my time where I'm filling it with audiobooks or podcasts or news radio or whatever. And maybe you enjoy that, but like you're filling time. I don't necessarily like all the things that go into just being in the office together. I get more done faster and I connect better with my coworkers from home. So what's the value other than to employ a middle manager? To, yeah. to sort of govern that environment there and there's there's like a laundry list of pros and cons to the to the sort of work from home environment and i just love that you've em really embraced the new tools we have at our disposal not just for like surface connection but for meaningful impact yeah yeah i i think it's fantastic and again it Technology has a way of enabling us to be more productive. And there's no question that people have become more productive with their time. Um, it, it, you, you mentioned the commute. It, it eliminates the stress associated for, in a <laughs> lot of large cities. You, you can come into that office and it's, you know, you've spent an hour on the road and you, you know, you, you start off your day fairly miserably uh -huh. and then you got to dig into it. And so, and and I like the, the idea for, for my coaching that you know i can be available on, on such short notice now through yeah. this kind of interaction very quickly and i can bring up all kinds of tools onto the screen you know by sharing them immediately let me show you an example of you know a you know some of the work i've done on somebody's resume or on their linkedin profile or i've rewritten their value proposition and their elevator pitch and and emails that you know they can kind of open up doors that a resume could never do and and, mm -hmm. and show examples right on the spot you know and without having to go through you know a long drawn out process to, to bring things with me to an in-person meeting so it's you know everything's right there at my disposal and and to me that's you know that's important to the to the coaching that that I do and the value that I bring to to people so that I can I can very quickly show them hey here's a before and after picture here's a, here's how they used to present themselves here's how they now do and and immediately people can see the impact of you know some of the writing and 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 strategy work that I've done for them in a job search I really that that's I really do love that because it's I, I often think of it as the over the shoulder experience of in person where it's like you you're at your at your desk at a computer or whatever or you're in a conference room I like to think of it as the over the shoulder because that's just more my personal experience but you're basically sharing the screen 
in person. And you can just do that so much more efficiently and effectively when it's like, hey, let's let's go through this together in the Zoom window. I'll go ahead and share my screen and we'll just go through. And you're like moving your mouse cursor and drawing people's attention. It's like you get the benefits of like a boardroom presentation, but also the 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 double benefit of a real like in-person connection. And you're kind of following along together on this path, like having somebody just over your shoulder watching you demonstrate exactly why what you're doing is so valuable and how it could be so valuable to them. It's just it's just a new it's a new tool to execute a very similar sharing. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 one of the things that it has done, it has freed up some of my time because I'm not I'm no longer having to commute to a venue, having to pay for the venue, the setup, the teardown, and all that logistical process. It enables me now to spend a lot more time posting my perspectives, for example, on LinkedIn which I do about three times a week. And again, they're, they're fairly short. They can be video, they can be text. It's you know, any, any you know, method I want to use, but I'm sharing so much more with my audience and anybody can go into my LinkedIn profile and ring that little bell at the top of my profile and be notified every time I post something. And so you know, I've, I've got about 31,000 followers right now on, on LinkedIn. So these people are being notified when I put something out there and they can go in and take a look on whatever topic I'm talking about. And I confine all my my posts to job search related activities. So they know that when there's something that I put up there, and if they're in a job search, it, it could, you know, certainly resonate with something that they're that they're tackling, you know, and 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 trying to, you know, overcome. You've really effectively removed so many obstacles to the work. So much of the work involves getting ready for the work. Like you said, whether you're setting up, going to the place where the work happens, returning from the place where the work happens, everything that happens in between. And you really are, this this opportunity, what it's presented is to remove so many of those obstacles. And again, exactly like you said, you spend more of your time doing the things that matter, doing the things that matter to the people that you're trying to serve from whatever way you're trying to serve them. And I just feel anything, I feel like anything that lands you, someone like you in that place, is a good thing. <laughs> and Absolutely. I feel like, and again, I, I love the way that you are, you, you demonstrate how it's just a new set of tools. And if you embrace them and learn how to use them and they're not that hard and it's, 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 it's fairly easy. You will spend more of your time and more of your energy doing the things that you care about, the things that you're good at and less just, you know, spinning your wheels, sometimes literally in the case of travel, <laughs> but often figuratively in the case of all the logistical nightmares that go with having to do, having to do everything face to face and in person. It's, I feel like it just it opens up a whole new world of opportunity for for both you and for the people that you help. Yeah, yeah, and and one of the things that that I have gotten a lot more active in is is video editing. Okay, mm-hmm. P- people, <clears throat> I think for a lot of coaches, you anybody who's going to enlist the services of a coach, they've got to they've got to trust that individual. They've got to they've got to get a, get a sense that that person's very credible and that that person can do what I need them to do to help me, right? And that's where video can be so powerful because when people have an opportunity to see you, hear you speak, and 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 the level of interaction that you have with the audience, whether there's people on the other side or not, that you can build up that rapport so that people go, you know what, this is the kind of person that I think I would enjoy, you know, working with, enjoy having as a mentor, as a coach, as somebody who can help me get from where I'm at right now to that job, in my case, <clears throat> that I'm that I'm trying to get to. And so to me, the, the video aspect that I've moved a lot more of my time into, I think has been very fruitful because it enables people to not just see my written words, but to see me in action. And I think that's important. And of course, every event that I do, the webinars, the workshops, I record them all. And people can go into my website and and, and they can go in and, and, and view these things at their leisure. So I, I just, I can't say enough about the ability to record and make available materials that we do. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really, when you think about it, it's really simple and straightforward. It's you give chance, you give people a chance to get to know you before you even know they exist. You just make yourself available. It's like, it's just you being you. They see your face. They see the way that you smile, the way that you look at a camera or at an audience. And they get a, they get a real impression of who you are and whether or not you're a good fit for them. There might, you might say something in a certain way, a certain turn of phrase, or say it with a certain passion that's demonstrated on your face that people just, they can respond to that. They can respond to your 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 presented humanity and be like I need to connect with this with this person and then they they come to you and they kind of already know you a little bit and they've also just sort of it's almost like you've you've sort of broken the ice with them 
before you've even met. You've already like talked about the weather and like got an understanding of like who the who who you each are and like how you might be able to help each other. And that you could just jump right into the good stuff then because they've already kind of broken the ice just by watching you say what you say and do what you do. It's just yeah, the the benefits are are tremendous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there, and, and, and while we're on this topic, I, I will mention a pretty interesting website. It's called crystalnose.com, C-R-Y-S-T-A-L-K-N-O-W-S.com. You can do a, you can get a personality assessment on anybody who's got a LinkedIn profile before you ever meet with them. Now, this is great for job seekers, and I train a lot of people on how to do this. But, you know, so for a job seeker who is going to, you know, they know who they're going to interview with but they don't know what makes that person tick. Mm -hmm. Well, depending upon how much content that person has in their LinkedIn profile, you can actually get a very detailed assessment of their personality. How do they communicate? What seems to motivate them? Are they a driver? Are they passive? You know, what kind of role do they like to play? How do they interact with people? Again, it's only as good as the amount of information in someone's profile, yeah. but boy, <laughs> can it be helpful when you're going into an interview and wondering, you know, you know what, you know what makes this person, you know, interested in me or other candidates that, you know, that might be interviewing for a job, and it's a, it's a, it's a great tool. It's a great tool for business people. You know, you, boy, wouldn't it be great to, to have that kind of an assessment before you talk with a, a potential cl client and and get a perspective on on what they're all about, what excites them, and then you can start to to, to sort of adjust and and modify your approach on how you want to communicate with them. I really love, first of all, I'm definitely going to check that out. And I really like that because that's something I don't think a lot of people think enough about is that moment when you're in the interview or in one of the interviews and you're meeting someone who's maybe for, probably for the first time, you're like interacting with them for the first time with someone who's going to make a significant decision about your, your professional life kind of. And you're like, you're basically, and you're dropped in not knowing who this person is. And so you're basically having to pick up on the fly everything you might possibly pick up. Maybe you've got your prepackaged anecdotes that, you know, you might realize in the first five minutes won't work for this person because it's obvious that X, Y, Z, they won't get it. Or there might be a generational gap that you didn't really realize until you went into the room. There's so many different things you don't know. And I love the idea of being able to meaningfully prepare. So you're not just going in blind and having to just just try to pick up whatever pieces of interaction you might be able to pick up. And that's so, I mean, that that's the difference between like, if you've got, you know, 17 qualified candidates right around in the same tier, how do you differentiate yourself? You nail the interview. <laughs> you make a connection with the people, a person or people who are interviewing you. And, you know, you could do that because you know a little bit, you did a little bit of the homework, a little bit of the background research to give you that edge. That's, I love that. Yeah. And, and of course, LinkedIn does give gives everybody a potential edge because if the person, if you're in a job interview, well, before you have that interview, the first thing you should be doing is, do I have any mutual connections with that person I'm going to be meeting with? Okay. Or I'm going to be talking with on Zoom. And if you do, well, then some of these people that are connected to you and connected to that individual, they might be able to give you some pretty valuable background because they worked with them before. They are friends with them. They're related to them. They're a neighbor of theirs. And they can they can give you a sense for what this person's all about. So having more and more LinkedIn connections has its advantages for multiple purposes, one of which is more connections give you more potential to get background on people, but it also gives you the ability to see more when you go on and start doing filtered searches on LinkedIn, which is important to coaches, you know, because you're looking for certain kinds of profiles of people that you think are a fit with, you know, the kind of audience that you're trying to reach. It might be based on industry. It might be based on job title. It might be on geography. And you, if you have more connections on LinkedIn, the results and the number of people that you're going to get in the filtered searches that you do will be far greater um, than mm -hmm. somebody who's, you know, sitting on less than 500 connections. So it's, you know, it's, it's a great tool. I use it constantly. And, you know, I can't say enough about how it's enabled me to be more effective and get more visibility for what I do so that I can help, you know, some of these folks that are struggling to shorten the time it takes to find their next job. Yeah, I, I've, I've been amazed. Even five years ago, if you told me that LinkedIn was a powerful tool for for professional and personal connection and on in a myriad of different ways, I might have laughed in your face because it was I mean, it was it was beginning to evolve back then. But it had still for the longest time just seemed like a resume builder on steroids or whatever. And it was just, it was a very limited platform. And they really have 
I mean, I, I invite anybody listening, if they haven't really dove into LinkedIn for a little while, even if it's just been like six months or 12 months, they have committed themselves to becoming a robust professional connection platform, not just in name, not just with like a resume and just like, you know, very formulaic templated posts and direct messages. It's a meaningful social media platform now upon which you can, you can do so much and make so many meaningful connections and get so many opportunities. I just, if, if, if it's been a while since you've dove in, just, just dive in. It's also one of the least toxic social media platforms you can find. You actually can cut through some of the, shall we call it, noise that you might find in other platforms and get to the meat <laughs> of what you might be looking for. So yeah, I, I also can't say enough about how powerful it's become. So I, I you know, I think that when, when I think also about what, you know, what's transpired in, in 2023 for, for my business, particularly on the coaching end of things, is, you know, I, I realized a, a lot of people out there, what, and not just job seekers, but a lot of people don't write well. A lot of people don't write well. They don't communicate well in, in writing. And if you can't write well, it's difficult to speak well. It's difficult to, to put things online, offline. And, and so to me, that's where I begin to differentiate myself. And so a lot of coaches, they, you know, a lot of them may look alike or act alike. <laughs> I have a huge differentiator when it comes to job search coaches because I didn't grow up in HR or talent acquisition or talent recruitment. And I tell people, quite honestly, the job search is 90% marketing. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> positioning, packaging, messaging, you know, engaging, targeting your audience, and then developing an outbound marketing campaign. I said, and that's the world I've lived in for over 30 years. And, you know, and, and, and unfortunately for a lot of job seekers, most of the job search coaches don't come from that background. They've grown up in HR. And it, it really takes a talent for writing. And I started out my career in advertising as a copywriter, I worked for the largest ad agency in the world. I helped mm -hmm. introduce some of the most famous products in the world because I was recruited and, and, and moved to uh, Tokyo early in my career to work for Dentsu, which is the largest ad agency in the world. And at the time I worked there, they had 6,000 employees, but only five of us were not Japanese. But we mm -hmm. were hired to help all of these Japanese multinational firms to introduce their products to the United States, Europe, other parts of Asia, Latin America. This was when the Sony Walkman, the VCR, the microwave oven, of course, Toyota, Honda, and Nissan were all clients of ours, Matsushita, Mitsubishi, Hitachi, Toshiba, all the camera companies, and everything we did appeared every week in Time, Newsweek, Businessweek, Fortune magazines, and it just honed my writing skills very quickly in, you know, in my career. And it has served me well in every job I've ever had. And, and mm -hmm. particularly in the coaching business, where the, the ability to write uh, about a person's value and, and, and to help them streamline their messaging is so critical. And it doesn't come natural, I realize, to everybody. And so for, for me, it's always been a, a very big and significant differentiator versus other people that are in my coaching space. Yeah, and I, honestly, I think as we talked about video a few minutes ago and its importance and how, how powerful of a tool it's become, people will get tempted to let their writing skills either stop developing or never develop them at all. And yeah, I, I feel like you would agree with this. I would encourage everyone to don't let that happen. Continue to work on your writing skills. You may be, you may start out as a pretty good writer. You may have, you know, a little bit, a little bit of talent there to start with, or you may have none, but you can still develop that skill to a point where you can, basically organize your thoughts and feelings in a way that makes them accessible to people in the written word. And that, yeah, that will, that will differentiate you from the pack more now than even ever before, I think, just given people's proclivity for pivoting to video, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and look at, look at what's going on in social media. I mean, there, mm -hmm. there are so many people posting things these days. Okay. Yeah, there, there's some really good stuff. There's some stuff that, that that's not so great or very, very self-serving mm -hmm. off topic, but, you know, getting, getting the word out is, is really what social media is about, whether you do it visually or you do it through content that you write. And so it's important, you know, to, to people that are looking for jobs, it's important for people that are coaching, whatever the, you know, the area of coaching might be, because you've got to, you got to realize most people don't know who you are. And when we introduce, you know, new services, new products, new people, we have to find ways in which to promote and advertise 
ourselves or other individuals. And so it, it all, in my mind, it all starts with the written word and the strategy behind what it is you want to say. And so I can't say enough about how social media obviously has helped a lot of folks to get the word out on them as individuals and to get the word out on companies that uh, are trying to make a name for themselves. Well, you've dropped a number of tidbits that I've I've really enjoyed, and I can tell you've got tons more. I just did the 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 podcast host thing where my my eyes darted up to the Zoom clock, and I realized we've been talking for almost thirty minutes already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I I knew I knew I might we might fall into this, but that's fine. There's always there's always more to discussion, more to share. So before I let you go, if anybody wants to tap into the voluminous well of knowledge that you have and tips and tricks and like actionable like techniques and strategies they want to know anything more about what you're putting out there where can they best connect with you obviously i'm sure linkedin what's your website where can people what what next action can people take to find out more about you and connect with you and maybe work with you well, the website has has got a wealth of, of tools available to anybody in a job search and the website is nsenginc.com what you'll find there are you know, a a portfolio of 17 job search webinar recordings that are 90 minutes each. You're you're also going to find three workshop recordings that are three hours each, one of which is on LinkedIn and how to use the platform. You'll also see my job search coaching packages and my job search, you know, custom coaching services that I do one-on-one with people. So the website's a good place. Also, feel free to email me at mgilbert at nsenginc.com. Check out my LinkedIn profile and, and, and ring the bell up at the top of my profile so that you can be notified whenever I you know, post anything out there. And you know, I've got events that, that, that come up every, every few weeks. I think depending upon when this will air, the next one I'm going to do, I do a lot of free LinkedIn lives. Uh, I do half hour sessions where it might be a Q&A session open to anybody, or it might be a specific topic I'm talking about. You know, I'll get anywhere from 500 to, to 1500 people registering for these. But the next one is going to be on Monday, November 20th. I haven't decided what the topic is going to be, but people should keep an eye out for that on my website. I'll always you know post them up there and you can go ahead and register. So, you know, a lot of a lot of ways in which people can can either reach out to me or see, you know, the kinds of things that I'm putting out there. And if anybody happens to be in a job search, um, I'm always open to having a free exploratory conversation to talk about, you know, where their needs are and how I might be able to help address them for them. That's awesome. I love that you offer your email address, too. I'm sure your inbox will sometimes get flooded, but it seems like the the hub, the, the places to start the LinkedIn profile on the website. And it feels like the spokes on 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 the wheel of your job search empire <laughs> sprout from there. So, man, Marty, thank you so much for not just sharing some time, but really sharing some serious value today. I, I feel like this is going to be a pretty useful useful episode for people, whether they're thinking about a new job, actively searching for a new job, or have recently acquired a new job and are wondering what they could do better next time. <laughs> Anybody yeah. in that cycle, I think, could get something out of this conversation. So, thank you for sharing your time. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge, and just. Thank you for being you. I really like the work you do. I feel like is very important and it keeps people from getting from slipping through the cracks and falling maybe farther down in their in their professional journey than they than they need to. I feel like you really do. You help in a, in ways that are both myriad and powerful. So I appreciate I appreciate what you do. And I just wanted to say that before I let you go. <laughs> well, thanks so much. I appreciate the opportunity to share this with with the folks that that follow you. And, you know, people need to know that if, if you are in a job search, you don't have to go through it alone. And I know it can be a very lonely experience. And that's why being a part of an organization can provide, you know, you with the opportunity to, to share with folks, to hear, you know, other perspectives. And, and in the end, the objective for, for me as a coach is to help you shorten the time it's going to take to land your next great job. And, 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 and that's, that's, the the objective and goal for any job seeker as well. So thanks again. Awesome. And to the audience, you know what to do next. Thank you for listening, but please also (laughs) take that gratitude, turn it into action, find out more about Marty, connect with him. If 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 anything he said has resonated with you, do yourself the favor of connecting, email him, everything, all the links to everything will be in the show notes. You know, you know, the jam. Thank you for listening. Thank you, everyone. We will talk to you again very soon.